Today we're going to talk about the Faisal Elite 3472LV Mark II tripod and see if it's a fit for your landscape photography. There's a couple choices when it comes to the Faisal Elite series of tripods of which you can choose from. You can choose a model that's in the three leg sections or four leg sections or with or without the center column which is a leveling center column which we'll dive into in a couple minutes. This particular tripod is the Faisal 3472LV, which means it is the four-leg tripod with the center column with the leveling feature in it. So we're gonna take a peek at this. We'll dive a little bit more into its specs, why I chose this tripod initially, and what my initial thoughts are on it as I've used it over time. So the Faisal 3472 tripod is a carbon fiber tripod. This particular one has four leg sections to it, can reach a maximum height of around 71 inches, a minimum height of around 3.6 inches, though you have to remove the center column to get to that. The tripod itself weighs in at 4.6 pounds, has a load capacity of 66 pounds, and can reach a folded length of 22.4 inches, and it uses twist locks for its leg mechanisms like that. I think twist locks are super handy. One of my favorite things about twist locks is I can grab all three at once, make one twist and get full extension. If I think I'm placed where I just want two of them out, I can take the upper two and get that out. So I think twist locks are awesome. I think it's super fast to put a tripod up that way. And these days I prefer all my tripods that have twist locks. So I think that's a great feature. Now, in addition, this tripod I do have with the center column. So it's got We'll dial here, raise lower, handy for your micro adjustments in height. Once you get things set up, the center column would be handy for that. A little bit of trade-off to its stability, not significant, but there is some trade-off. We'll dive into the benefits of a center column versus not a center column in future video. And this also has a leveling column. So if you get all set up and you're just a touch off level, you can undo this little button down here and you can get some micro adjustments to change your angle. So if you get your tripod nice and stable, you can make small micro adjustments with that and get yourself on a stable platform. So that's sort of what the leveling center column brings with it. This tripod is available without that or with it. This particular model that I have came has it with it. So in addition, has good height, you know, with the center column, everything like that. Let's take a peek at what we can get max height wise. Um, super tall. So this does have a ball head on it, but its platform is like right about here. So already it's probably an inch or two taller than most other tripods that I've used. And then if you crank in the center column aspect, super tall and nice and sturdy. It's just a very sturdy tripod. And if you want those heights, that is way up there. So super cool features for that. If you're looking for height, this thing will get it for you. Now, while it goes super tall, it's advertised minimum is like the 3.6 inches or so, but that is without the center column. So if you want to get that, you would need to use this without the center column. So there's some trade-off as to what you want to do with that. You could do it in the field or anything like that, but um, so while it can get low, that's assumed with no center column. With the center column, obviously this starts to get in the way, you know, not letting you get quite as low with it. So to adjust the legs, you press this button. You can raise it all the way up, flat like that, and then it'll click down as you go. So it makes it super handy to do, and then, you know, press it down to get it up. And the legs do go all the way up, which can be handy to get it, shrink it down in size like that. And don't forget that it's got the level at the top, just if you need to level things off. And this tripod has a little rubber feet on the bases of them. But anyways, those are some of the features I think are make a great landscape photography tripod and one worth considering. So I chose this tripod initially for a lot of studio work. I also do studio work outside of landscape photography and my initial purchase of this was predominantly for studio work. However, I do use it for landscape photography and it doubled for that because it is a very sturdy tripod. So the benefits it brings with to the landscape photography side of the world is it's very sturdy, nice thick diameter, uh, tripod legs, gets plenty high, center column, you know, gets you those micro adjustments, things like that. For as sturdy as a tripod it is, its weight is not bad. Like I said, it comes in around 4.6 pounds, a little on the heavy side, but the trade-off, that's sort of the trade-off to get this stability this has. This is a tripod that if it was windy or anything like that where super heavy camera for some reason, really for me, most of landscape photography would be is bad weather, um, windy weather, things that are gonna cause stability problems. This tripod is a tank. Uh, stability wise, like I said, but you're not paying too much for it and weight at 4.6 pounds. 
Uh, not the lightest tripod out there, but the stability you get, pretty awesome. So those are some of the reasons why I chose this tripod. So I don't really use this anymore for most of my day-to-day -day landscape photography, but predominantly that's due to the weight and size of it, um, as I, which really became more of an issue when I started the YouTube channel because I need to carry more gear out in the field. I became suddenly more weight conscious. So because of that, I don't use this quite as much anymore because it is a little on the heavy side. It's a little bulkier and things like that. So this is not really my day-to-day -day anymore. However, if I was going to a seascape or I knew I was going to some really terrible weather where the wind was going to be there and I needed to get my shots, this would still be the tripod I take just due to the stability it comes with. Super awesome in that regards. And when you're not having to hike in long distances with it, or you know, you're like me trying to carry two tripods into the field, this is good because for the height, the stability, to come in at 4.6 pounds, probably around 5.6 with the ball head on top. Um, it's a great tripod, uh, super stable. You saw how high it gets. If you like to shoot from high angles like that, excellent tripod for that. So I think this is an awesome tripod, super durable, no problems with it from that standpoint. One of the big reasons in my decision-making was I just needed to lighten my load a bit, which is why I switched to using a different tripod. So if you're not needing to take into those type of factors, this tripod is definitely worth taking a look at. Like if you want one tripod that's gonna handle the worst of conditions, this is a very good tripod to consider. Definitely glad to have it as an option for me to take, um, even though it's not my daily carry anymore. It's a good tripod. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you wanna see future landscape photography content from me, including gear reviews, behind the scenes looks, and general thoughts on landscape photography, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content from me. And thanks for watching.